grace and peace to you from the God the Father and our Lord Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The title of my message is An Attitude of a Grateful Heart. An Attitude of Grateful Heart. Let's read Luke chapter 17 verse 11 to 19. Gospel of Luke, chapter 17, verse 11 to 19. Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priest. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Where there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Where there not any found who return to give glory to God? Except this foreigner. And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in your sight. I pray Jesus' mighty name. Amen. It is a question time. You no need to answer at this moment. I am going to ask few questions from the passage we have just read. So here are some questions going to come. Who is Luke? Is he the option A, a king? Option B, a doctor? Option C, a tax collector. D, a fisherman. The last option would be or one of the disciples of Jesus. So as I said earlier, no need to answer at this moment. I will give answer when the sermon will be free. The second question, what is leprosy? Um, particularly the young generation doesn't know leprosy at this moment. So that's the reason I pick up this question. Option A, heart disease. Option B, flu. Option C, skin disease. Option D, eye infection or eye disease. The third question would be, where were the ten lepers when Jesus met them? Were they in the village, in the temple, far off from the village? Or honestly, I don't know. How many lepers came back to Jesus? Came back to thank Jesus. Was it eleven men, fifty-five men, one man, ten men? The final question would be: What did the man who came back do? Did he give an offering to Jesus, or with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet? Giving him thanks. Here is that's all the question. And uh, I would like to start with the story. Two men were walking through a field one day when they spotted an enraged bull. Instantly they were running towards the nearest fence. The storming bull followed in hot pursuit, and it was soon apparent they wouldn't make it. 
terrified the ones out to other. Put up a prayer, John. We are in for it. John answered, I can't. I have never made a public prayer in my life. But you must implore his companion. The bull is catching up to us. All right, panted John. I say the only prayer I know, the one my father used to repeat at the table. O oh Lord, for what we are about to receive, make us truly thankful. If there is one sin that is most common today, it is the sin of ungratefulness, thanklessness. God does so much for us, our indebtedness to Him is enormous. And yet, we are rarely or at least infrequently offer thanks for what He has done. In fact, most Christians don't even offer thanks over their meals, much less offer thanks over all that God does in their lives. We are much like the little boy who was given an orange by a man. The boy's mother asked, what do you say to the nice man? The little boy thought and handed the orange back and said, Feel it. <laughs> this is the attitude we have with our God, our Creator. For a child of God, thankfulness is not confined to, day, to a day or a season. It is an attitude that we should have every day and every hour. Today's sermon is taken from Gospel of Luke. So let me give some overview about Gospel of Luke. The Gospel of Luke is one of four New Testament Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Four narratives of life of Jesus. We know. They are of course monumental. They are inspired by the Spirit of God. They tell the great story of salvation. But Gospel of Luke is unique. How? If you ask someone about Luke, the answer would be, well, he was a doctor, a physician. You would be right. But let me give you more details about Luke. Luke, apart from the Apostle Paul, was the most influenced force in writing the New Testament. In fact, the writing of Luke, which comes in two volumes. Volume 1 is the Gospel of Luke. And volume 2 is Acts of Apostle, which we are studying at this moment. So adds up volume 1, Luke, and volume 2, it adds up to 52 chapters. Gospel of Luke is the longest of all the gospel narratives, and, and therefore it is the most true and complete. The total of 52 chapters makes Luke the author of one third of the New Testament. His friend and companion Paul is author of another third of, third of it. So together, two of them written two-thirds of the New Testament. New Testament. So I would say, next to Paul, Luke is the most powerful writing force in the New Testament. The Gospel of Luke, it starts with the birth of the John the Baptist, the forerunner to Jesus, and it ends at the end of the book of Acts, which is the volume 2 in his writing, it ends with the gospel being preached at Rome. Which means the gospel has been extended to the world. No other writer wrote so comprehensive a history of Jesus. No other writer goes all the way from the John the Baptist to the gospel having reached the capital of the Roman Empire. He is the most complete storyteller in the New Testament. And he is mostly unknown to us. Going to this chapter 17, in the 17th chapter of Luke, we come to verse 11 through 9. During this period of Jesus, 
journeys which really began in chapter 9 verse 51 when it is recorded that he moved in the direction of jerusalem he will make that arrival in chapter 19 verse 28 he will go into jerusalem through jericho in the chapter 18 during this time of months and months of ministry there were many healings and many miracles and many casting out demons and there were multiple times of teaching and ministering as he moved with his disciples and apostles around the world luke however records five miracles for us they are the only five by any means during the time of his ministry he nearly banished the diseases from the whole of israel there is no way he to even calculate the number of his miracles even the new testament testifies to the fact that the things that he said and done couldn't be contained in the book of the world but do we have five miracles during this journey period this is the fourth miracle the first three involves one person the last one involves two in jericho when jesus heals two blind men but here is the miracle that involves 10 people 10 people with the most terrible disease the disease is leprosy the disease is leprosy let me give you small details about leprosy the disease called leprosy leprosy can be general word lepis in the greek meaning scaly and is the word that can be used to describe a number of skin diseases skin diseases they could be various kinds not very serious to the worst kind which is created by a bacillus a bacteria that is this is we know as leprosy this is such a serious and such a communicable disease that the old testament made prescription about people who had it and in fact this is very ancient disease it has been found in mummies so it goes way back medical historians believe that leprosy origin originated in egypt where it was found in a very ancient mummy if you see leviticus chapter 13 and 14 lays out very careful lays out a very long and careful prescription for determining whether somebody had this disease and the whole and the local health inspector were the priest that is a part of their function since they were responsible to know the law of god and apply the law of god and since this is laid out in the law of god if you had a skin disease of any kind you went to the priest and you went through a process of all that was required in leviticus 13 and 14 so there could be determination as to what exactly you had and if it is discovered that you have that communicable disease called leprosy that's so horrific that's so horrific you were then removed from all social contact and the only people you could ever associate with were other lepers the subtitle would be the position of lepers look at verse and 12 and it came to pass as he went to jerusalem that he passed through the midst of samaria the galilee and as he entered into a certain village there met him ten men that were lepers which stood uh, far off we see here the position of lepers are they in very good position no they were in an awful position Luke says here they stood afar off. 
the disease physical pain was not the most terrible part of the disorder lepers were separated they were set out and cast off it seems here that these leper lepers were set out to an area away from everyone else they were set out from their family no one knows how long it had been since they had felt the touch of their wife or the kiss of their children they were set out from their friends friends no longer came over or invited them to go somewhere with them they were set out from the fellowship of synagogue notice that jesus on his way to jerusalem entered into a certain village and there met the lepers the religious crowd had no room for these leprous man but most awful they set out from the father here is the jesus the only way to the father and they stood afar off from him sinners are not near god they are afar off and they cannot and will not draw near to their own they were in an approachable position here are these men living set out lives but i am grateful this morning that the where the law says cannot go jesus goes for the law declares off limit jesus barges in when the law passes on the other side jesus make it a point to make contact or oh, listen jesus came to save sinners he went to this way on purpose because even in awful position sin puts us in jesus is able to reach us and to save us my family can help me my friends can help me but jesus can and while we stand afar off from him he does he does not stand afar off from us when they could not get to jesus jesus got to them when they could not come to him he came to them but they were all in the same position have you ever had a totally bad day have you ever had a totally bad day i read about a man who was sitting in a bar looking at his drink he stayed like that and half an hour then a big trouble making truck driver stepped up next to him grabbed the drink from him and gulped it down in one swallow at that the man burst into tears the truck driver said come on man i was just joking here i'll buy you another drink i just can't stand to see grown man crying no it is not that the guy rip, guy said today is the worst day of my life first i overslept and was late to an important meeting my boss was outrageous and he fired me when i left the office i discovered my car had been stolen and the police said there was nothing they could do i took a cab home and as he drove off i realized i left my wallet in the back seat of my taxi i thought it couldn't get any worse but when i walk into my house and my wife was not happy about my job position and she told me to leave so i stopped by a chemical store and then came here i have been sitting here thinking about taking my life when you came in and drink all my poison that is a bad day for both of them am i right that is a bad day for both of them 
the bible never promises our lives will be free from pain and difficulties from this current world instead the bible promises we will have many trials and tribulations in this life the secret to successful life is knowing where to turn for help when you have a problem that's what we are going to see these lepers turn for help towards our lord jesus let's see further verses the request from lepers now look at the verse 13 and 14 and they lifted up their voices and said jesus master have mercy on us and when he saw them he said to and to them go so yourselves and to the priest and it came to pass that as they went they were cleansed all ten after the same prayer notice two two things here quickly their observation they saw and they sensed their need you don't pray and call out for help unless you feel your need the reason sinners don't come to christ for salvation is that they don't sense their need but the loneliness and the pain of this disease were evident to these 10 lepers they knew they needed help and there was none to be found except maybe in the one in this one called jesus whom they heard heal the sick there is no doubt they need help so they cry out for mercy their obedience prayer without obedience is useless jesus tells them to go to the priest now the priest had no power to cure but he had the authority to declare the one cured clean and to issue the certificate of cleanliness so that all would be sure of his healing but do notice that they were not healed immediately but they were healed as they went as they obeyed the command of the lord they were healed the third subheading would be the one who praised the lord i don't think so the powerpoint is not working let's read chapter sorry verse 15 to 19 and one of them when he saw that he was healed returned and with a loud voice glorified god and fell down on his face at his feet giving him thanks and he was a samaritan so jesus answered and said where there not ten cleansed but where are the nine where there not any found who returned to give glory to god except this foreigner and he said to him arise go your way your faith has made you well here is the key to the whole issue all were in the same awful position all prayed and all were healed yet only one of the 10 returned to offer thanksgiving the opportunity to pray and one of them he saw that he was healed turned back he saw a reason to pray he saw a difference jesus had made he saw a change wrought by christ he saw an opportunity to praise god many see their need 
to pray but don't see their need to praise God. I don't know how it has happened. We are not told here, but maybe as they walked towards the priest house, he began to notice his skin losing that scaling white appearance. Or maybe they passed by some people and he expected, expected that they would run to the other side and yell, unclean, unclean, but it never came. I don't know how he came to the conclusion, but when he saw that he was healed, he stopped going the one direction and made a beeline to Jesus Christ. He had reason to praise God. They all had reason to praise God, but only one saw it. Where are the other nine? I have no doubt. I have no doubt that after they were declared clean by the priest, they made their way to be with their family and their friends. To hug and kiss the wife and the children. To visit with mom and dad. To talk with friends. Their minds were occupied on all that the blessing brought to their lives. But one, one loved his wife and children just as much as the others. One wanted to hug and kiss his wife and children just as much as the others. One wanted to step, spend time with his friends just as much as the others. One wanted to enjoy the blessing just as much as the others. But one had his priorities in order. One had his priorities in order. One did not get so wrapped up in the blessing that, the, that he forgot the blesser. One put family, friends and fellowship on hold so that he could worship the one that made his being with his family and friends possible. Notice that. With a loud voice, he glorified God. With the same loudness and the intensity, he cried for mercy. We glorified God. Many times, we cry loud for help and, with, and low with the price. But with the same zeal, we sought help, we should praise him. And he fell down on his face, at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Me. Oh, he was not a pure Jew. He was not worthy of his healing. He was not worthy to receive God's help. He is one outside the covenant. Outside the people of God. Outside the promises. Outside the adoption. But by grace, he was healed. And he comes to worship. The one who unconditionally healed him. And he got more than others did. They received a physical healing from a distance. But this one not only received a physical healing, but he got close to God and worshipped him as a Lord and received a spiritual healing. God may choose to physically heal a man from a distance, but spiritual healing comes only we fall prostrate before the feet of Jesus Christ. To worship, worship him as Savior and Lord. His faith did not save him, but it connected him to the one who could save him. 
let me come to the conclusion. Look at again at Jesus' final words to this man. In verse 19, he said, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. If you look at King James Version, I was reading New King James Version. If you look at King James Version, it says, And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made the whole. Here, concentrate on that last word. It's the word in Greek, zozo, S-O-Z-O. Maybe my pronunciation might be wrong. So, zo, which means saved. It is the same word the Philippian jailer used in Acts 16. When he said, what must I do to be saved? The word means to be made complete or whole. Jesus did not come here to heal people of diseases. Otherwise, he would have established a hospital. He came to this world to seek and save the lost. He came to make people whole. Here is the result of this miracle. Ten men were cleansed, but only one man became whole. Ninety percentage of them only received a small portion of what could have been there. And only one received a full salvation. My beloved, Jesus wants to do more than just clean you up. He wants to make you whole and complete. One of my favorite promises is found in Philippians ch chapter 1 verse 6. It says, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. It is a process. Have you simply approached Jesus because you want eternal fire insurance? Or are you continuing at his feet daily so he can make you whole? I don't know why we are in church today. But I know why Jesus showed up here today. He wants to make us whole. Everybody heard the message. Everybody enjoyed the benefits of Jesus' power. Everybody received in the wonder of his teaching and his miracles. But only a few came, fell at his feet, glorified him as God, worshipped him, humbled themselves, and offered him thanks. The majority, they were the takers. Small group were the ones who gave him thanksgiving. My beloved, how do you respond to this message? How do you respond to this message? Are you going to be part of small group? Are you going to be part of small group who came and fell at his feet, glorified him as God, worshipped him, humbled themselves, and offered him thanksgiving? I can leave it with you. Let us pray.